Hello. Let's see if I can flip this around. There we go. I am a little late today. I decided to go downtown and do a little shopping for, sorry about this, shopping for uh, stocking stuffers for my grandchildren. I'm in Franklin this week, Franklin, Tennessee, and it's a perfect opportunity to get some nice handmade goods. They have a lot of those in the shops downtown. Okay, I'm, the light is not doing well today. It's a really cloudy day, so I'm hoping you can see this. Let's see. If not, I am sorry. But the natural light, even when it's dimmer, tends to be a better option for me when I paint. Cause my eyes are getting a little on the older side. Natural light helps. Okay, when I'm painting. And I love to paint outside. The inspiration is amazing. Okay, I am going to, I'm just using a rigger brush here for my screech owl. I encourage you to look back over the last few live streams, the replays, and you'll see how I got this one started. Now I'm not doing this exactly, and my where the reference photo I can't show you because of the copyrights, but you're welcome to go get it yourself. It's on the Facebook group, free reference photos for artists. I think that's what it's called. I've linked it below, so just head on down. I've also given you the author's name, photographer's name, to go search for the screech owl. Let's see here. A few areas darker, a few lighter. Basically, this screech owl is sitting in a tree over in the nest area. And I want to make sure that even though this is still the foundation layer, I am painting in the direction for this to go. Now, the foundation layer generally gets covered up with the later layers, but sometimes it'll show through just enough that if you do not paint in the direction, you'll, it'll make your painting a little off and you'll be able to see it. So, okay. I think that's downwards. There we go. Whoops, I'm pet sitting. If you hear the little shepherd mix, I say little, he's a big dog. In the background, he gets excited. Let me run and shut that door so we don't have to hear it. One of the neighbors is walking their dog, and he's making sure to let them know this is his house. That's okay. Alrighty. This layer's not going to take too long, or finishing up this layer. And it will have to dry, and since I've started so late, I'll be on tomorrow. Probably painting most of the day. Let's see here, there we go. Now this is a red morph, Eastern Screech Owl. They come in a dark morph that's more sepia colored and a red morph, which is more burnt sienna colored. You can hear the artist coming out there talking about it. <laughs> so, and the tree around it has a lot of the same reddish-orange colors that are in the owl, which the screech owls are very good at camouflage, looking just like the tree. 
So that makes sense that this little red morph would fit in right with this tree that has the same colors in it. But it's amazing how they, when they sit real still, they look just like part of the tree bark. The way to find them is to, when you're out hiking, I've seen some up at Dunbar Cave in Clarksville, Tennessee. And the easiest way to find their nests and where they congregate is to look at the base of the tree. You'll see the droppings and you'll also find owl pellets, which people like to collect and dissect for school projects. Okay, let's go a little darker here. Let's throw in some sepia in here. These are gonna be our two primary colors. Darken it up a bit. It's a little blue. There we go. And I'm just giving the, mapping this out in the direction of the painting here. Let's see, this area here is gonna be fairly dark because it is recessed a little bit. If you're curious about my black mix there, or the colors, refer to the videos yesterday and the day before. There we go, let's go a little darker there. Let's see, we're gonna go to right there. And right there. Now there's a couple ways you can do this. You can also, this is wet on dry. You could also do this with wet on wet quicker probably. But I found that I like my tree bark with dry brush, especially this kind of tree bark. It just gives it the texture that's already in the tree. Makes it a little faster and easier to paint that way. Let's see, I need to darken that up a bit. Should probably put blue in there. Alrighty. Sorry, I got a little lost in the paint there and forgot that I was recording. It can be a little mesmerizing when you paint and peaceful. These crickets in the background are not helping, or tree frogs, I'm not sure which they are. We have both out here this time of year. Okay, I think it's time for some her number. Let's get that going here. We have lots of different browns going on here and different brown mixtures. Alrighty.
Let's see. I do you want a little darker right here in the tree bark over here? You notice I'm not being precise. I don't need to copy the pic, the reference photo exactly. What's important is that I get the features of the screech owl right. And if I'm trying to show habitat or location, like this is an eastern screech owl, you'll want to make sure your bark is representative of a tree that's from that area, not just painting any kind of tree bark. But it doesn't have to be exact. All it needs to do is represent that. So if somebody looks at it and they know their trees or the habitat for the eastern screech owl, then they can verify what region it's from. Because these birds, I know some artists who don't know birds very well just paint the general birds, but every bird has regional differences. You have your western screech owl, your eastern screech owl. They all have very slightly different features that distinguish them apart. And if you don't paint those features, then someone who knows better will not be happy. So, and I don't get it always perfect. I'm still learning. But I do my best, especially early on. I painted I had some reference photos that I was told were from a certain area. I hear geese. And later discovered that those were not from the area that I was told they were. So I'm very picky about my reference photos. When I go to sites like the Facebook group that I've linked below, I do make sure I know what area and what region these birds come from. For example, a European robin is going to be very different from an American robin. So make sure if you're wanting to paint local wildlife that you at least look up what's the distinguishing features in the regionally that you need to put in your animal. Okay. Well, I have the basis of this down. I'll go in tomorrow and do some more detailing here on the bird to bring it out and then do a quick wash. And that will be the foundation layer and then we'll start building it up. So tomorrow I'll be on live several times while I get this painting finished. So I'll see you tomorrow.